I've seen a lot of postings on the internet about the Hornby TXS Bluetooth decoders in Next18 format being too big to fit in locomotives. And today I'm going to definitively put that to the test. I'm not taking other people's word for it. I'm actually going to test this empirically. A big hello to you. It's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard, and today we're back on the subject of the Hornby Bluetooth decoders. It is certainly the topic that just keeps on giving, but one of the things that I've seen said about them a lot online is about not being able to fit them into so many other brands of locomotives. And it must be said that Hornby designed these for their TT range. It wasn't really their intention that these were going to be something that they were selling specifically specifically to fit into other brands of locomotives. But I thought that I would delve into this and I got as many Next18 socket equipped locomotives that I could find in my collection and I did a test fit across every single one of them just to see what they would really fit in. So with thanks to Hornby for supplying a couple of Next18 decoders for me to be able to do this test, Let's go and delve into it. And before we go on, don't forget that uh, tickling that like button, sharing this video, and most importantly, subscribing if you've not already done so, is a great way of showing your appreciation for the videos. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at Tramfabrique. Dot co dot UK. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'm really excited. Will they fit or won't they fit? Are there actually any other locomotives that you can get these into? So I've delved into my collection from N gauge to 009 to 00 and I've brought you every single Next18 equipped locomotive that I can find and I've tested every single one of them. Did any of them fit the decoder? Well, come with me and let's find out. I've got out from my collection every single Next18 decoder equipped locomotive and I am going to conclusively demonstrate whether that Next18 decoder does or doesn't fit. So uh, starting the lineup, we've got the double O gauge Daypole Terrier. In front of that in the beautiful Caledonian Railway Blue is the Backman Class 812. Moving down to the front, GWR Mogul from Daypole. Behind that, Sonic Models Robinson A5. Moving on to the Daypole D Class, sticking with Daypole for a manner. And then moving to the new tooled Backman J72, sticking with Backman for the Webb coal tank. And then my only Hellion Next18 equipped model, the Northeastern Railway ES1, Rapido 16 inch Hunslet, sticking with Rapido for my only Next18 equipped N gauge model, the Class 28 Metrovic. And then moving to the front, we've got the Hornby TT A4. Now it must be said, that these decoders were specifically created for the Hornby TT range and to that end they do fit all the Hornby TT products and it must be said that uh, well I suppose why would Hornby be obliged to make them to fit other manufacturers models but we're going to put that to the test we've got the Planet Industrials Victory class back to Rapido for the 16xx Pannier and then rounding us off, we've got a pair of 009 models with the Baldwin tank at the back in uh, Southern Monsal Green and the Festiniog Railway Double Fairly at the front as well. And I'm going to see whether 
these next 18 decoders fit any of these models and uh, we'll keep a tally as we go through to uh, find out. And I'd like to thank Hornby for very, very kindly providing one of their next 18 Bluetooth decoders specifically so that we could finally and definitively put this to the test in a video. So here is the Hornby Bluetooth Next18 decoder. We've got all of the functions on there and this board at the top that sticks out, it must be said, is the Bluetooth antenna, a very necessary component of these decoders. And uh, in time, Hornby have promised that these will get smaller. At the moment, there is some limitations on the size of components that can be sourced. So this is kind of the maximum size that they will ever be. And I'm going to compare that to, I've got here, the Trainomatic Next18 decoder. And this is actually on the smaller side of Next18 decoders. So in terms of a comparison, we've very much here got little and large. Now this does fit in every single one of the locomotives that we're going to test today. But what we want to know is how many of them does this fit into? First up is the Hornby TT. A4 Pacific. And as I said in the intro, this is specifically designed to be able to fit this decoder. And actually, when you compare the size of the decoder to the locomotive, it's, it's quite clear that the locomotive is not exactly taxed for space to be able to find room for this. So first up, we know that it fits into this. So that's one out of the 16 that it definitely does fit. And I'm not gonna bother doing the fitting because we know it fits. I'm gonna go with one of the smaller locomotives, the J72 from Backman. So firstly, let's get the top off and see whether there is room for that decoder to fit. There actually does appear to be a reasonable amount of space in here. And that is borne out by what's available inside the body. So I'm going to just take out the decoder that's in there at the moment. And we've got our next 18 decoder. And what we can see is actually it's the Bluetooth antenna that is overhanging the circuit board at the back. With the body off, that's going to work just fine. There is, I think, a speaker pre-fitted in there, so we don't need to find room for the, uh, the TXS speaker. And let's just see can we get the body back on or is this going to be too tight a fit so i can feel there it's just not going to go in but once hornby make these smaller with the next iteration with that bluetooth antenna made a lot smaller then this form factor would fit but at the moment it does not the next locomotive up is the Daypole 260 Mogul. With this one, it's just simply the socket is in the smoke box, quite easy to get into. So I'm going to go ahead and get the daughter board out. With the daughter board removed, you can see that we've got the Trainomatic decoder in place on here. If you do want to fit a speaker, then there are solder points underneath and uh, it takes a specific size of speaker that just clips in with a housing. But at the moment, all we're interested in is will it fit? So I'm just going to take out that decoder and you can see this is actually quite large compared to that daughter board but the daughter board was recessed into the front of the locomotive so we might be all right so there it's fitted to the daughter board it's not wider than it and that still leaves space underneath for the appropriate speaker should that be needed so actually we're thwarted trying to get this in through the smoke box door. The two of these together stacked one on top of the other don't quite fit through. And that is such a shame because if I put it in sideways, I can feel it would go back. It's just not quite. Let's just see, come on, you can get in there. It is such a tight fit. 
If I move it slightly to one side, I can just get those through. But uh, I'm going to say we're thwarted, not by the size of the decoder. And let's see if we put this in the other way. How far in would that go? Um, I think that would potentially fit once that connector went into place. It's just simply these two connectors on the side, which theoretically you could remove both of these because you could use the speaker points underneath, fit that all in, and the locomotive doesn't, strictly speaking, need a power bank. So, unfortunately, I'm going to call it thwarted at the last hurdle. I really thought that was going to go in. Next up is the Cali 812. And uh, again, I've got high hopes for this. So I'm going to dismantle the locomotive, get inside, and let's see if we can fit that decoder in. Again, we can see the decoder sat here on the top. And just looking inside, we've got a reasonable amount of space behind that. Not much further than the edge of the circuit board, though. So I'm just going to take out the decoder that's already in and fit in this decoder. And again, it's that Bluetooth antenna that's sticking out the back, which unfortunately is going to prove the undoing. So let's just... See, is it even possible? No, it's like millimeters each time. It's always down to that Bluetooth antenna, which is such a shame. But again, defeated by the Bankman Kali 812. Next up is the Sonic Models A5. And in this one, the decoder socket is in the bunker, fitted transversely, if I remember correctly. And looking on the outside, it's promising. The decoder is narrower than the body. So it all really depends on the location of the next 18 socket. And I suspect that it'll be offset just slightly too much. But nonetheless, we're going to open this up and take a look. At the moment, I've got a uh, Stay Alive fitted, which is actually in place of the factory fitted speaker. But all we're interested in at this moment is whether the next 18 decoder will fit. So I'm just going to very carefully unravel this. And I will just un hook this decoder. We just want to see whether this will fit within the confines of the bunker. And again, we've got that overhang there. So I know without even trying, we're not going to be able to get the body back on. And that is a shame. So Sonic Models A5 is defeated. Next up, I'm going to try an N-Gage model, and certainly it's something that I think a lot of N-Gage modelers have been waiting with interest for these decoders to see whether they will actually fit in their scale. So I'm just going to very carefully take the body off. And I think on this, it looks to be that uh, it's going to be a width thing more than anything else. I'm going to take out the blanking plate, just fit in the next 18 decoder and that's that's gone down and in really nicely it is within the overall width does it fit within the curve so there you have it it does fit in the smallest locomotive that we're testing here so rapido class 28 and n gauge ka -ching. Next model, we're back to Daypol with the D-Class. And for this, um, is again simply a case of going in through the front smoke box. If you've got slightly long nails like me, then that's easy peasy to get in there. At the moment, I've actually got a Stay Alive in here as well as the decoder, which does bode well in terms of space. So we can take all of this out. And again, we've got that same daughter board uh, situation that we saw in the GWR Mogul. So I'm just going to take all of that out. And let's just line up 
next 18 decoder make sure that that has clipped into place overhangs ever so slightly but again i think it's a width thing and again we've not got the width to get both the daughter board and the decoder in in the location that it would have to go in so unfortunately the d-class has defeated this decoder back on backman with the web coal tank and uh, let's get the top off and see if the decoder fits inside this locomotive we've got the pre-fitted speaker which is good the next 18 decoder will make use of that and then we've got the decoder socket up here at the front and again, I think it's going to be that uh, Bluetooth antenna that is going to thwart us. So yeah, I can already see that that is protruding too far to be able to get the body back on. Let's just double check that. And yeah, it's simply not going to go in. So unfortunately, that's not a fit for this decoder. The next model up is the Rapido 16XX pannier tank and for this the socket is underneath the top of the tank but it is reasonably roomy or at least I remember it so so we might get lucky with this. With the body off you can see where the decoder goes and I think we might stand a chance but actually on this it may become a width issue to fit between those two screws and unfortunately that is what's going to cause the issue the bluetooth antenna though still sticks out so unfortunately it doesn't fit in this locomotive next up i've got both of my backman 009 locomotives and in this one the decoder fits transversely at the front I can already see that the decoder is longer than the locomotive is wide so I'm going to call that a no without needing to take the body off. With the double fairly the decoder sits in a compartment underneath and it's looking like that's going to be far too tight a fit. I will double check though on this one because I know there's quite a few people with these who might be really interested in being able to control them via Bluetooth. So that actually doesn't bode well because this decoder, I've had to remove the plug for the Stay Alive to be able to get it to fit in and uh, I can see immediately that's going to be another no. Next up is the Daypole Manor. It's a huge locomotive and when you compare that to the size of the class 28 and N that it actually did fit in, we should have the space that we need, uh, but I suspect we're going to be thwarted by it being too wide to fit in through the smoke box door. So I'm gonna just uh, get this open. And yeah, I can already see that it's going to be a struggle. So I've got the door to board out. That's the speaker enclosure fitted in place. And you can see, that it has to be narrower for this to be able to get back in. I'm going to just remove the decoder that's already in here and very carefully add that in. We've got a similar width to the daughter board and that is what is proving a problem with these Daypole models. Although, so, so close. What is apparent is that in these Daypole locomotives, what is stopping this from going in is the speaker and power pack terminals. However, with the speaker fitting underneath, you could very carefully remove these and just measuring it up, I think that this would just fit into the manor. And I suspect that means that it would just fit into both the D-Class and the 260 GWR Mogul as well. If you could get these two plugs off and use the onboard speaker facility to be able to get the sound. And um, that's really the only way I could see of doing it. You could grind the sides of the board down, but really I totally don't recommend that. I think there's too big a risk of damaging some of the integrated circuit tracks on the board 
that really the only way to progress would be to remove these two plugs. Next up is the Planet Industrials Victory. So again, it should have enough space if there's enough width and length for that decoder. I can't actually remember how the decoder socket is in this, but let's open it up and find out. This is a little bit of an interesting one because the decoder socket's here on the side. And whilst the TXS decoder doesn't naturally fit in that gap, there is a recess behind the tank. So I wonder, and actually there's enough space over on this side to put the power bank uh, because there is a speaker pre-fitted in this. You don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to just experiment with this. I think we could actually be onto a winner here. It all depends on how far down that decoder protrudes. And that'll be really disappointing if that's too low, because I think, oh, it's such a shame. There's so much potential. You could cut away a small amount just there with something like a Dremel. That bit there is not load bearing, it's not structural, so we could just take that out and then it really is a case of working out if the decoder will fit. I wonder, is it possible to slide it in after the event? Now what's clear is it's going to protrude down a little bit. So it's just simply a case of machining away a small amount there. I think it will fit. And this is something that you may well find a little bit of work. See, because that is going to fit, sort of. And I guess if you very carefully paint it with a paint that's black, uh, even something like nail polish, black nail polish just along the edge to hide the whiteness of that, I think... You know, we could get that. It's so tempting, isn't it? Really tempting. I, I'm just wondering whether I should just... I haven't got a Dremel here. I bet you that a power bank will fit in there as well. So we've got a power bank here. I am so tempted. So that would very, very carefully... Oh, it's almost rude not to fit this in, I have to say. That is a perfect fit in there. Well, I have to claim victory for the victory. It actually does fit, and you can just see it protruding down there. I removed about two millimeters square of metal that was uh, non-structural. It's actually quite easy to do. I used my uh, sprue cutters, uh, such as the thinness of the metal, although if you had a Dremel, it would be a lot easier. And the power bank fitted absolutely perfectly in the other side tank with the wire carefully run up, uh, coiled around just around the funnel and then back down and plugged it into the decoder. And it's using the factory fitted speaker that all of these Planet Industrial Victories come with. So absolute success. After our success with the victory, let's see if we can get this 16 inch Hunslet from Rapido to actually take the decoder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the body off. With the top of the tank removed, it's very, very clear that we are not gonna be able to get it in unless you are prepared to do a little bit of machining of this metal. Not something I'm particularly uh, going to do. It was really easy with the Victory class, but with this, that's a much more involved job. So I'm going to say a no for this one. The next model up is the Hellion ES1. And this one's a bit tricky to get into, but I'm going to go ahead, get the body off, and we're going to see if this is potentially one which it will fit the next 18 decoder in. And certainly something like the Class 71 sound that's forthcoming 
would be pretty good for this, or you could use the class 73 file, but with F5 engaged, so you only get the electric sounds. With the top off, it's uh, going to be a tight one. Let's have a look. And unfortunately, again, it's the wireless Bluetooth antenna that is causing the issue. And I can see there, without taking out the previous decoder, that that unfortunately is not going to fit. The final locomotive that I have that is Next18 fitted is the Daypole OO Gauge Terrier. And I am not convinced that this is going to fit. I'm just looking and I can already see that in terms of size, there's no point in taking the body off. It's simply not going to fit in the space that is available in this locomotive. So after all those test fits, I've got the final three locomotives that I have verified are pretty straightforward to fit that Next18 decoder into, with three more in the form of the Daypol Mogul, the D-Class and the Manor, which are a possibility, but you will have to modify the decoder by removing those plastic plugs. The Class 28 is, even though it's the smallest locomotive I tested, was the most straightforward with a drop-in fit of that Next18 board. It's a really tight fit, but it's in there and I've tested and verified that it all works. The Hornby A4, well, we expected that to be just fine, and uh, of course it was. And that's just because Hornby designed these decoders for the TT locomotive range, and I suppose it isn't really an impetus on them that they have to make them fit other brands of locomotives. It's just a bonus. And what a bonus the smell of victory was. That decoder fitted into this Planet Industrials victory with only a very small an easy to do modification and the power bank fitting in the tank on the other side just made it rude not to fit this in here and of course the bluetooth next 18 decoders support a lot of features including the abc shuttle which is exactly what this locomotive will now get pressed into doing and it's the only shunting locomotive that I've been able to fit the ABC shuttle capability into by virtue of the support that these decoders give. So all in all, a successful test fit. And whilst people online saying that these do not fit in other manufacturers locomotives are partially true, certainly a lot of brands and models, they really don't want to go in there. It was clear to me that the Bluetooth Aerial is what is stopping it from fitting in quite a few. And hopefully that's an area that Hornby will be able to make them smaller in later iterations. So watch this space. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that and found it informative too. And certainly, I was quite surprised that of all the locomotives that I tried, the absolute smallest was the easiest fit in terms of that N-Gage Class 28. And it's the only N-Gage locomotive type that I've actually got. So it may well be that N-Gage is quite forgiving if they're Next18 equipped, because if they're like that locomotive, there's actually a lot of top space in them. And that pre-fitted speaker really is a great boon. And it's something I found actually across all of the Next18 equipped locomotives that you don't really need the factory speaker and that helps an awful lot to use the one that's built into the model because it's one less thing to worry about. Now that Victory locomotive, well I smell Victory and it really it was rude not to do that full install as soon as I realised that I could make the decoder fit with just a tiny little modification and that power bank was the 
deal clencher, just putting it into the tank on the other side, and it's just made that a real champion performer. I just couldn't believe it. And it's not the biggest of the locomotives that we tried either. It just happens to be set up that it's really, really forgiving to the extra space on that Bluetooth decoder. One of the other things too that I noticed was that it's that Bluetooth antenna that seems to be the sticking point for quite a few different fits. And hopefully in the next iteration of these decoders, Hornby will be able to make them a little bit smaller and that might open up the possibility of a lot more locomotives being able to fit these in. There were a few others where they were kind of a near miss. So those Daypole locomotives like the Manor, the GWR Mogul and the D-Class, for me, I reckon if you take off those plastic plugs for the power bank and for the speaker, and then you can use the onboard speaker that you can fit direct to the underside of the daughter board in those, I think they will just fit, but I wasn't really daring enough to remove those plugs and try it. But as far as I can tell, there's just enough space to fit that decoder in there. So don't take it as the absolute truth that they will fit, but I think we've got three possibly maybe there with those locomotives. But I'd love to hear from you. Are there any other locomotives that you've found that these actually do fit into in the next 18 format? And what are your thoughts on this? And indeed, are you going to try a fit of the Bluetooth stuff into the Victory locomotive from Planet Industrials? Or maybe you've got an N-Gage fleet and you're suddenly eyeing up these all new decoders in a new light now that you know that they will just about fit into those Rapido Class 28s. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. And you can also head on over to Patreon and help support the channel with a number of different tiers of rewards. There's something to suit everyone and it's a great way to help us keep making the videos that you want to see. We've also got our full merch store too, so don't forget to have a browse of that. And the Monday Club Pal Bricks have finally arrived. So uh, we've also got a link for them. There's a few left if you want to get yourself over there. 25 pounds each. It's the only single pack of the PAL bricks that are available and uh, it's certainly proving popular and I'm looking forward to seeing those appear on uh, people's layouts up and down the country. But until next time, this is me Jenny Coates saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshaw Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papere, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.